So I got a message from one of the viewers of my YouTube channel who was taking a look at the hide a next button until something else is done video where I explain how you can keep a next button hidden until a user has clicked all the other buttons on a particular page. In that particular interaction, uh, there was a whole series of buttons that showed uh, different states for a multi-state object. And uh, Misha asked, is it possible to do something similar with the standard Captivate play bar? And, you know, my initial thought was, because I've never tried it before, no, not without getting your hands dirty. That's what I responded uh, with. And actually, one of the reasons I don't use the inbuilt play bar, I prefer my own controls. Uh, Misha followed up with that and said, I was afraid you were going to say that. I was hoping to use an advanced action uh, on the enter slide action to show hide the play bar until all the variables were uh, touched in this case. The action I built includes the play bar just fine, uh, or hides the play bar just fine. Sorry, I'm not wearing my glasses. Um, upon entering the slide, but I haven't had any luck getting it to show. And she wrote uh, show back up. Um, and I'm 85% sure my variables and actions are all set up correctly. And she put a frowny face emoticon and just got me thinking, hmm, that's an interesting thought. If on slide enter you assign cp command show play bar, which is the system variable, with a literal value of zero and then made your resulting action of your advanced action to assign a value of one once you've satisfied all your requirements, then it should work. This is really good. I never thought of doing it this way. Uh, might be worth a video tutorial. So uh, if you don't mind uh, me trying that. So that's what I'm doing here. Let's uh, minimize this here. And I went back and I took one of my recent projects where I'm using, uh, in this case here, a series of advanced actions, a series of conditional advanced actions. I removed my customized back and next buttons. And uh, in the project uh, skin editor, I turned the show play bar control back on because previously I'd left it off. And in this case here, I just have a forward and back control, but there's no reason you couldn't put any of your other controls here as well. And uh, so I modified my advanced action. Let me show you what I did. Uh, I should point out that I added a click box uh, a click box that's set up to only accept a right click and to pause the project until the user clicks. And of course, you could hide this behind other objects if you didn't want users to accidentally click on it. But I just needed something to pause the project, and I couldn't use one of these buttons because obviously if you click these buttons, then the course would continue. So I just have this off to the side just to keep this slide paused until such time that the user has actually clicked all the buttons here. Now, let me show you what I did here. So let's take a look at the, um, oh, and I should point out that on enter, there's an execute advanced action, and I simply have one single command in that advanced action, and that's to assign the system variable of cp command show play bar with a literal value of zero. So that will hide the play bar if it's turned on uh, prior to arriving on this page. Now, then you have a series of advanced actions, in fact, six in total, one for each of these boxes here. So let's take a look at the, uh, the first one here. So in this advanced action, I just simply called it impact underscore one uh, slide 10, and this was originally on slide 10, and that's why it's called that. So my conditional action is if the impact uh, slide 10 or impact one slide sorry i'm losing my vision here uh, let's go up to the top here impact two slide 10 variable so i'm checking for all the variables associated with um, each of these buttons here with the exception of the one that i'm clicking on so i have a variable for button two button three button four button five and button six and they're all initial valued at zero and obviously, if I'm clicking the first one, uh, I don't need to check for its variable because I am, in fact, clicking it. But I do need to check the variables uh, for the remaining buttons. And if they're all greater than zero, I'm going to run this set of actions here. 
And if they're not, I use the else section of the advanced actions window to run just these two actions, which will simply be to increment that variable by one for the first button and change the state of the image and the text that's on the screen to uh, correspond with the information about the first button. Now, so here's the difference though, in the actions under if they're all greater than one, simply assign cp command show play bar with one. And I've included this step in all the different versions of these advanced actions. So if I click, for example, the last one, there's an advanced action. Again, it's checking for all the other values. Obviously, you've clicked on this number six, but it's going to check the, the variables that are associated with the first five buttons to make sure that they're greater than zero. If they are greater than zero, we're going to assign cp command show play bar with that value of one. In other words, we're going to make it show the play bar. We're also going to change the information on the screen as well. And that's basically it. So it works quite well. I've tested it out. Let's just do a quick preview. And obviously, if you want to see the video where I create this um, showing and hiding my own buttons, I'll put a link for that up here in the upper right hand corner of your screen. But uh, let's take a look at this preview and just see how this works. So we'll do it in an HTML5 in browser. So we've arrived on this slide. It's hidden my play bar. And of course, I can click the same button dozens and dozens of times. And obviously it doesn't add the play bar back until I've clicked all of the objects. Here's the last one here. Watch for the play bar. And there it is. Now I have my back and next controls and my users can continue with the rest of my Adobe Captivate project. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.